Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's much appreciated. For those who haven't subscribed yet, let me take you a second. Yeah, much appreciated. Thank you. And what I want to talk to you about today is we're going to start a, a multi-part series on how to create a wordy book. I'm looking at maybe 20 to 30,000 words. So it's not a typically huge book, not like a novel. And we're going to be doing it all in Canva. Our aim for this video is to create several pages. The start of the book, including introduction, content list, titles, copyright information, and the first chapter. We're using ADP's print previewer for this. Now I've uploaded just this first chapter to the print previewer. I've done that by setting out the whole book. So here's how the book opens. So this is what we're aiming for today in this first part. And you can set your book out however you want. This is just to give you an example of how I'm setting this book out. It's a non-fiction book. Fiction books can be set out differently. Uh, it's really a personal taste, but there are some rules. As we open the cover, we're presented with this page here, Cycling Southeast Asia. And I've put an image here of, of one I've captured myself. And as we turn the pages, there's a blank. There's a blank on the back of that first page that we opened with the image. And again, on the right-hand side here, we've got the title page again and the author. We have an image and we have information about the image. And that's my bike there in the, in the background. It's one of my images. We continue. What we have here is on the back of the inside title page, or the second title page, if you like, we have copyright information. Really simple copyright, all rights reserved, 2023, uh, which is when I intend to publish the book. Opposite that, on the right hand side again, this is important. Important information should be on the right hand side. The content, we have chapter numbers, and I'm not sure on these yet, but these will be adjusted as we go. We have introduction, and that is an I. We have cycle gear list, that's page one of the first chapter. This is important, this is how we set this book out. I don't know what pages these other chapters will be on yet, but I've just put these here to give you an example for now. The one we're working on is chapter one, cycle gear list one. Now this could be chapter one, anything you're producing, and page one. We go again. I've put an introductory page on here. And I've centered the text for this because it's only a little bit of text and I quite like it like that on an introduction page. I've added another image and I've titled the image. Again, all in grayscale because I don't plan on making a color version of this book. You may choose color. As you can see here, the introduction page has an I at the bottom, not a number. We don't start numbers until chapter one and the first page of chapter one. After my introduction, again, it's blank on the back. All the left-hand sides up to now are blank other than a little bit of copyright information. I don't go mad with copyright information. I keep it uh, quite simple. That's my choice and it's enough, I think. As you can see here, we've worked our borders and we've pushed right to the edge here. And this is what it's all about, making use of the space we have. Chapter one is a different font than the chapter name itself. I've chosen the same font for the body of the text. Now, that's not always the way to go, but I actually like it. Like I like the font itself, which is Serana. This text here is, this is Serana, and this is Amber Sands. I actually like the two together. And what you'll notice is there's a page number, page one, and it's on chapter one starts on the right hand side. Some people don't like to waste paper or pages, so they may have the chapter on the left, but overall, the vast majority of people will have the chapter on the right. You'll notice that there's a broader border here to the edge of the text. It goes past the dotted line. This is the safe zone here. Anything outside that, it will get flagged and you will have to make adjustments. So we're hoping not to go down that route. Also, the bits that get trimmed off are the outside edges of the book, still leaving you with a broader inside gutter margin. So we're quite safe there. We're right on the edge of it, just slightly inside of it. That's great. Nice broad section here for the gutter margin. In a page, what we have then is, I like a nice broad gap on my non-fiction between each paragraph. I also like to align my text 
to the left and to the right margins when I'm doing non-fiction. If I'm doing fiction, I just align it left. I think it looks nicer. You might not have any. You may just move it up. The choice is yours. You may have a broader start here for the first word on each paragraph. You might not have any. It's really your, down to your personal preference. I'm just working with this to show you how to put the book together. On the left side of the book, we have the title of the book. On the right side of the book, we have the chapter title. You don't have to have that. You could have the title of the book and the author name or whatever it is you want. Um, you could have it the other way around if you want. This is just my personal preference. At the bottom of the page, we have page numbering. Again, this is a personal preference. These numbers could be on the outside. The two could be here. The three could be here. They could be at the top. I could have page, the, the words page two, page three. You know, you, you, you're spoiled for choice. I like to center them at the bottom. It saves me a bit of a headache remembering which is it left and right. And it looks neat. I've gone for full bleed with this book. So the images go right to the edge and they just get trimmed off. I make sure any text to do with the images is inside the margins. We're going to be doing all this. Now what I can do with these images here, this particular page, I'll go back on. And what I'll do is I'll space this out a little bit more. I'll bring the text here down in line with this text on this page here and bring this image down. So there's a larger gap either side. And this is the beauty of being able to go to print preview because then you can go back and just, just shuffle things a little bit about if you want to. And that's the end of our first chapter. And that's what we're doing today. And this is, this is part one. And this will be me putting the first chapter together and what I'm going to do with it from there. So it's going to be quite detailed. It's going to be a fairly long video. Uh, but if it's something you're interested in, if it's something you want to do to be able to format your own book just in Canva, um, then this is definitely for you. The book's going to require bleed because I want images to go right up to the edge that are in the book. And we're going to use margins that I've shown you how to create in Canva before. And there's a link here uh, for you to go over that. So there's no need for me to show you those again. I will just go over lightly in this uh, tutorial and part two of this tutorial might not be for some time there'll be other videos in between that right if we go to Canva custom size we want six by nine but because I'm using bleed I'm adding 0.125 to the six on the width and I'm adding 0 0.250 to the height on the nine six 0.125 on the width, 9.250 on the height, and that's in inches there. Create new. Now that includes the bleed. It's an introduction to the book. It's a title page in here. There's the copyright information in here. So this first chapter, um, with that beginning, is quite long. I don't create any more pages just yet. What I do is I create the margins. Now, to find the right sizes, we, go, we use Amazon for that. And this you can use that no matter who you're publishing with. At the bottom of the video here, this is a different video that I've just produced, we show more. And we scale down and we look for Amazon KDP margin sizes. And we click on that. We're going for up to 150 pages in this one. 24 pages to 150 pages. Now the inside gutter margins, whether you're using bleed or not, are the same. And for this, it's 0.375. So I'm going to call that on here, I'm going to call that 0.4. Because 0.375 is a little hard to gauge using the rulers. You can see the guidelines here. If, you, if you've not got them on, click them on. Show rulers and guidelines. Right, I'm going to go to elements. I'm going to pick a box. I'm going to move that now to the gutter margin. And the first page is on the inside on the right hand side. As you open the book, the first page is on the right. And that's where your first chapter starts. Try to always start your chapter on the right or any important information on the right. So 0.375, we're going for 0.4. And you can see on the rulers here, 
one, two, three, four. Okay, I'll just extend that a little bit because it doesn't really matter. And we'll drag that all the way down. That's the gutter margin done. Now we'll copy this, paste it to the outside, drag it over. Now we go back to the margin sizes and we're using outside margins with bleed. Again, we want 0.375. So I'm going to go with 0.4 again. So this is basically as it is. We can leave that on the outside and on the inside. Now the reason for that is because a book has so few pages, something like this really. Um, well, there's 20,000 words in this one. So pretty similar. You don't need as big a gutter margin because you're not having to open the book as much. You're not having to fold it up to get inside into the into the gutter, into the binder. So, and now if that book was... Let's just get another one. Forget about the size of the book. It's just an old classic that I have. But if you wanted to get right inside here, you would need to have the gutter a lot bigger so that you're not having to tear open the binder to get at the words. We want the top one. So let's have a little look. We'll go back to trim sizes. Like I say, the link is in the description. And if we read the top here, top, bottom and outside margins must be a minimum of 0.25 inches for the book without bleed and 0.375 inches for the book with bleed. So again, we're back to 0.4 here because I don't like the 0.375 bit. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it, push it up to the top, move it across, drag it up. You can open a new box and do that if you want. And go to the rulers on the left hand side here. And we want it to reach the fourth one. Does it? If we drag this up and down. One, two, three, four. And it does. So that's the top one done. Copy and paste and drag that to the bottom. Now if I zoom out, that's our margins done. Now there's no difference, like I say, with the inside and the outside, inside gutter margin and the outside on this because there's such few pages in it. If I was to break into the 150 or get close, get close to the 150 pages, I might want to broaden that gutter margin. And if we go to the trim sizes again, 151 pages to 300 pages is 0.5. And that's a big difference from 0.375 for up to 150 pages. Right, okay, that's the first page. Now this is actually super easy because everything's the same. It's all the same. I can just duplicate that page all the way through and work it from there. But I don't really want to do that with this because I'm not sure how many chapters uh, there will be in the book. I'm not sure how when I will stop. I know that there's going to be maybe twenty to 30,000 words. There could be 100 pages. There could be 150 pages. There may even be 200 pages. I've already got underway. I've, I've um, produced 13,000 words at this time. And they're ready to actually go in to this book. I want to leave my options open. So I'm going to go with... 151 to 300 and have a bit of a broader border that 0.5 to start with and I'm going to move that to half an inch 0.5 of an inch and you can see one two three four five at the top here right so my broader border now is on the gutter now if we look at these pages here in this book of 100 pages say there's a broader gutter margin and that's fine. Narrow on the outside, broad on the inside. Even for those few pages, um, I can get away with it. And it looks tidy. I actually produced this one myself anyway. For the purpose of this whole thing, we're going with the wider gutter margin. Narrower outside margin. Top, outside and bottom are all the same at 0.4. So what do we do from here? Well, we duplicate that. I'm going to duplicate that page. But this time I'm going to take the gutter margin and the outside margin and swap them over. So now we have the first page 
and the second page all on the same page so it's the front and back of the same page right now for this book I'm going to add a full page image and the title if I go to uploads I've uploaded an image already and I've just got that from from one of my own files an image I captured myself myself while I was in in that region uh, you can use canvas images even better if you have the premium or the pro account you've got more images to choose from but let's just have a little look and let's just say I did use photos and I use this graph at the top here like a little equalizer and I picked three images and then I picked let's say Thailand I could drag this image across and set that as my first page the as soon as you open the book that will be the first image you see it's taken up the whole of the page forget about this border it's behind the border I'm intending to create this book in grayscale so because color is quite an expensive way to go and with it being a, a little handy guide it would be better for it to just to be in in the grayscale um, printing costs will be down sale price will be low and I can still make a decent royalty and more people will likely buy it I go to edit image down to here to filters see all filters scroll down to grayscale I like the grayscale rather than the very very dark uh, colors because or blacks because I think that can take in too much ink and it can show through from one page to the next and um, it can create problems or waves in the page if there's too much black in it but like I say I want to use my own images I'm just giving you an example there using canvas free image uh, and if you've got the premium account like I say then you know you've got more of a choice so I'm just going to delete that a second upload here's an image I captured myself in Thailand and I'm going to go with grayscale So as soon as I open the book, that's the first page anybody sees. Now I've got to choose my fonts for the whole of this book. We could use the text here. We can use all these different things. I could use something fancy like that. If I just scroll down so we can see it and put it in this window, I could have it here. So if I was to call it Cycling Southeast Asia, and just get it down a little bit so it fits. Get rid of that one for a second move that back into there so now I can see where it's going and maybe give it a white drag the box to the edge to the margin edge same on the other side and center the text so that's fine so that's a, a nice opening page once I've moved, removed the borders when it comes to it we'll have that so that's a great start to the book the font uh, it might be a little too fancy so I'm going to go with Serana. It's a nice font, ideal font. A lot of um, newspapers and uh, magazines use Serana as a font. That's S-U-R-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Serif fonts are quite nice, simple and easy to read. Now the serif stands for having a little tail or a little, little bit of an add-on. And like a little curly thing or a little flat out at the bottom and that's what the serif is sans serif means no little curly tail um, or detail on the end of it that's the first page done second page is at the back of the first page so the first page always starts on the right hand side the back of it there'll be nothing on this one so i'll leave that as it is now i want this frame here with the deep gutter, deeper gutter margin and the narrow outside margin to be the page after this one. So I will duplicate and move that down one. Remove the image from it. And then the page after that will be this one. So I'll duplicate that, move it down one. And if I zoom out, you can see we have gutter margin, gutter margin, Got alternating go to margin go to margin this whole introduction page two we're not going to be using it page three 
Now I'm saying page three, but that's what it says here in Canva. We don't do any page numbering until the very first page of the first chapter. And that will be page one. So page three, I want another image and the title again. So I'm going to copy this, copy this title, put it in here, move it up to the top a little bit, give it a black. Okay, so we've got one at either end now. Give it up a little bit more. Make sure the the box for the text is touching the inside and the outside margins, the gutter and the outside margins. Now I'm going to use another font here. Go with that straight away. It's the second largest. And I'm going to move that down to the bottom. And this is where the author or company title will be. I'm going to call it adventure cycle okay so i stretch that box out to the edge and again out to that edge so that's that and it's a decent size from the top about the same gap there as there is there i want another image so i'll go over to my uploads and i click an image this time don't want to drag it because uh, it will just fill the whole of the background i don't want that I go for edge to edge because it will get trimmed off in bleed and that's the image I want. So I go to filters all the way down to the bottom to grayscale. Like say if you're using color, you won't have to do that. Now page four is that side. I'm just going to put a bit of copyright information at the bottom. So I'll go to text, pick the smallest of the text, put it into the location I want, drag it across so it meets those borders the outside margin and this gutter margin so next for this for me i could actually just put acknowledgements in this one if i wanted to and acknowledge whoever helped with the book whether that's an illustrator or anything else or to recognize anyone for anything and then use the back of that page blank and then start on page seven um, and do some more stuff but i don't need to put acknowledgements in for this because i'm doing everything myself I'm going to leave that and I'm going to add a contents page. So I'll put a little text box in there and I'm going to call it contents. Again, it's centered so that it stays between the wide gutter margin and the narrow outside margin. Create another box and put in all my chapters. I'm using Canva Sans for this. The chapter names created another box and I just keep going down as I add more and more chapters to meet up with them when I want what page the chapters are on. So I add another column. Like I say, the first page of your first chapter starts with a one. Anything before that, you can use um, Roman numerals, letters, anything you want. Anything at all that's important is on the right hand side. Always on the right hand side. Chapter titles, always on the right hand side. Contents on the right hand side chapter title on the right hand side acknowledgements introductions all on the right hand side the only thing not on the right hand side on this is the copyright which is on the left hand side of one of the pages because it needs to be there but it doesn't need to be in everyone's view back of the contents page blank we're off to page seven now it's an odd number so we want that's on the right hand side we want the gutter margin on the left hand side of that page so we want to copy this and move it down so it's at the end and just remove all that stuff from inside and we also want the next page which will be the opposite of this page we have the gutter margin on the left hand side the next page will be the gutter margin on the right hand side i keep repeating myself with that one because it is important to get that in your head all it is is alternating your very, very first page of the book, when you open it, if you're going to have any margins at all, they will be on the right-hand page. When you turn that page over, your gutter margin then is on the left page, deep inside. So, after contents, we have a blank on the back of it. Page 7, for me, will be an introduction to the book. It's like a blurb. It's, it's just... Um, tells you a little bit about the book. It might tell you a little bit about me. But it doesn't in this case. It just tells you a bit about what this book's about. I open a text box. I'm going to put that up near the top. Make sure it meets the borders, left and right, the margins. 
and I'm going to enter the text. I'm going to call it introduction. It's a decent size, so that's no problem because it's a title. Now I want the text. Before putting anything into these boxes, because you won't be able to really edit them easily afterwards. It's not like a Word document where you take a word out and everything moves up. Nothing can move up from each box to the next. It stays where it is. So you can take a word out and you could end up with a big gap. You could take a whole sentence out and it might look odd. Uh, or you might want to add another sentence and then you're going to have to move everything down. And that's another reason why for this book I'm doing one chapter at a time and then joining all the um, chapters up, the chapter PDFs at the end, all up together. Right, so I had another text box. Okay, I stretch it across from border to from margin to margin. Enter it. Choose the font I want, which is Sorana. Get it down to the size I want, which for this this is the this is the body of the text now. So I'm looking at a size 12 or maybe a 13 because it's quite a small font. It looks a small font. So I'll maybe get this one to a 13 and I shall move that up. And I want another image. I'll put a little bit of text in to say what the picture is. And I'll just open another text box, write in it what it is, make sure you can see it. So I've got it in white there. Keep it with inside the margins. And I shall do that with the other images. Make sure people know where those images were captured. Uh, I'm not bothered about that one, but that was actually Thailand. Right, so what we've got is introduction, I. And if we go down, I want that on here. So if I move that up, move that up to there, I now need a box to fit here to put some text. So, and that's going to be a permanent position for the I, one, two, three, four, whatever. So I'm going to take a text box again, and I'm going to put that right down here to the bottom, right on the edge of the outside margin. Drag it from one side to the margin to the other and shrink it right down. So I want it to be less than the body text. So I might go with 11 for that. Move it right down again to the edge. And I want something to separate these this gap here. So let me just move that up a little bit more out of the way for a second. I'll copy this and I'll put that just to the top of that text and then shrink it down. It doesn't have to be much because on future pages this line here will separate the body of, body of the text from page numbering and so on. So let me just change this to an I. Again it's centered and I can move this right down to the edge now for now. And how are we looking? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight we're on now so there'll be nothing on the back of the introduction page again the introduction page is on the right hand side like everything should be this is this will be interesting because we've started the book now that first bit we don't have to do again all we have to do now is work with our chapters one at a time until we've finished our book but that first bit is attached to my first chapter so this pdf will be the start and chapter one. Starting chapter one always starts on the right hand side, ideally always starts on the right hand side. A bit of a tradition. Um, sometimes when text is finished like with one line or maybe one line on the back of something like this, people don't like to waste a page by having nothing on it. So they'll start a chapter on the left side, but ideally you'd start it on the right side. So this is what I'm looking at. Got a margin on that side of the page, outside margin there, and that's the way we're going to go forward. We duplicate that page and move it down one. If I zoom out, when you duplicate a page, it goes straight underneath the other one. But we want it at the end, so we just have to move it down and get it to the end. And I'm going to empty that, move the picture, keep that box as it is now where the eye is, because that is now going to be one because this is the start of our chapter. Got a margin, outside margin. So we're looking at the fonts again. So I'm going to go with text box, which is going to include Sorana 
as everything else has done. So all my titles are Sarana, and I'm going to move it. That'll do. And I want chapter one. So there's my text box, and again, make sure it's right touching the touching the outside margins. Okay, so chapter one, cycle and gear. Right, okay. And that's page one. Now we enter our text. Now I've created a text box, and I've copied the text from my Word document and entered it in. Now, this is this is where it gets a little bit tricky. <laughs> it's just a matter of remembering, really. It's up to you how you set your text out. Now, what I've got here is, it's quite clear. It's a decent size, at size 13 for this. If I was using, say, an Arial font or something like that, uh, I would go with a 12 maximum. But because it's such a tiny or skinny font, I don't mind um, just taking it up one for that. If I go to here, which is spacing, you can choose your line spacing. Mine's at 1.4 at the moment. Now, if I was to move that, I could get the line spacing broader or tighter. Up to it's up to you how you how you want it to look. I just happen to like 1.4. Now, if we go back to that again, also in here is letter spacing. Now, I try to keep that as it is, unless there's a problem with runts or orphans, if you like, at the end, just one word, which is no good at the end of a the end of a paragraph. And there's a link there to work with widows, orphans, uh, to explain at least what they are. And then there'll be a link in there to get you to learn how to do something with them. Like I say, I like that set at zero. Now, I like to, to set things back. When I first start a chapter, I like to start a little bit further in. Now, it's very hard to do this with, with Canva because, you know, with word processors, you get to put um, a margin. You get something to click to. It's not quite the same with Canva when you're working halfway through a paragraph. So if we go over to the edge here, and like I say, file, show rulers and guides, you make sure that's on, go over there, left click the mouse, and drag a line over, a guide over, and put it where you want your first word to start in each paragraph. And that's where I want mine to start. It won't always get that close because it's not clicking to it. If I was to actually move this whole box, but because, see here, I would click to that, to that guide, to that ruler, and to the outside edge. But it won't do that halfway through the wording. So I set it up there, and it's only ever going to be basically close to that line. So if I zoom out a little bit, I've got that set up how I want it. And all I did was push the text over until I was happy where I wanted it, drag the guide over. And that's where I want them all to be. But I don't really have to worry too much. Now what I have to do is copy this first chapter and paste it. Now you can see here, if I drag this, you can see how it had 167 at the top, 167 at the bottom. So that's given us a bit of a gap for the next chapter, a bit too much of a gap in my, in my view. So if I just push that back up a little bit, okay, now I'll go copy some more text, highlight the text that's in there, paste, okay, and I shall move that T to the other side of the line, Okay, so that's cool. Each margin, left and right. I'm going to copy, paste, move that down again. Okay, so let's just go with 167, like we did, like we looked at at the beginning. Move this box up until we get to 167. So now we know that these two gaps here are the same. I want text to go in here now. I'll highlight all that. You can do it with the mouse. or hold the shift key down and the arrow. Paste. That's all my new text going in there. Move that back to the line, or as near as possible. That's okay, we want more text to fill in this gap here. So if I just copy that box there and paste it, move it down, so that all these are still the same, the same gap between each one. Make sure it's border to border, margin to margin. You can see there's far too much text in there. So what we'll do is we'll simply remove a couple of lines of that text. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the next page. So we want the gutter margin on the right side for this. So we duplicate, move it down. So as we can see, if I zoom out, we're really starting to get a picture of this book. So I copy that box, I go down to the next page, and I paste 
Now with what we've got here, we've got something a little different because now we start with having headers on each page. We don't have a header on the chapter page, but we have them on all of the other pages. If we copy this text box first, place it at the bottom, move it into position so it's got to margin to outside margin, change it to a two because this will be now page two. We copy this. Take your time. I know it can seem quite complicated, but it's not really. Once you get your head around it. So we've got both pages set up now with the footers, which are going to be the numbers. We want this again. We're going to copy that and go up to the top of the page and paste it and move it about until it fits at the top of the page and make sure it's margin to margin. Now then, it could be a personal preference, but as you can see with one of my books, I don't have a header. On the following page, I have the title of the book. On the right hand side, in the header, I have the chapter name. You could add the numbers there if you don't want the numbers at the bottom of the page either. You could add them to each of the pages. It's up to you where you put your numbers, but you can see how you can play about with it. So, yeah, I have the book title on the left and chapter title on the right. So the chapter title for this is Cycle and Gear. The book title is Cycling Southeast Asia. So that's what I'll put in here. Now what I'll do is I'll take this box here, copy, and move that up to the top. Drag it into position so it sits just under the text box. So the text box is all on its own, separated from the rest of the text. Now then, we'll go back to filling in the story. I'll move that right up to the top there till it hits that top line. And again, it meets the two borders. Right, OK, it's time to enter some text into these boxes. So we finished off here with wet ground. So I'll go over to my Word document. I find out where my text was and I copy from wet ground. And I'm going with, OK, that's a bit far from the line there. OK, so that's better. It's not a full paragraph. I can only get a couple of lines in, so I don't end it with anything. Not a comma, not a full stop or anything. Because it leads people to want to read the, the next part of the paragraph. So I copy more of my text from my Word document and I paste it in. A light tent with an inner secure meshed area. So I'm going to copy that again, paste, drag it down into position. I'll get some more text. Move the start over to, to the ruler guide there. And I'm going to copy that one, paste it down until it meets. And I'll fill it in with something else. Copy, paste. Move it into position, another one, paste, OK, and just make sure everything moved around so it's nice and even. Right, OK, this chapter here, waterproofing is vital. We've ended it with poncho with. Now we want to margin on the left again. The previous page was two, so this one's going to be three. We want copy, paste. And we'll move that into position. Now we're getting there now because we're not going to have to keep doing this with every single page. This, this, these little bits. This is just to get the first few pages set up and we'll be able to duplicate them. Duplicate them. And it will get much, much easier as you go along. Chapter 1 had no header. The right hand page from there is going to be the chapter name. So it's cycle and gear. Okay, and that's page 3. So we just continue where we left off. Waterproofing is vital, punch our width, continue with some more text. If I just copy that box, paste it into the next one, it's to the top there, copy some more text, paste it in. Again, because we're continuing a chapter, we don't need to have a space before the line starts. So it's punch our width, waist ties will do just fine. Right, okay, so that's that continued. I'm going to copy this one again. Paste it in, move it about, copy some more text. And I'm going to keep doing that. OK, we're partway through the paragraph there, depending on the. Need to start another page. We've got the gutter margin on the left on this one. So we want the gutter margin on the right. So we'll copy this one, duplicate that, and right down to the bottom. And that's page four. Depending on the, go back to my text, collect it, 
from where it left off. Don't need a gap to start with because it's continuing. That would have been just one line there from that first chapter. That would have been called a widow. There's the link again to learn about widows, orphans, and runts and rivers. Okay, and then copy some more text. Put that back a little bit. Okay, copy that. Copy some more text. Okay, getting down onto my 13th page here. I want to add another image. Okay, move the text for it to fit. Add an image title. Right, okay, so that's it. That's the beginning of the book, the introduction, and the first chapter complete. So what do I do now? Well, I'm going to save this separately before I start creating chapter two. And we'll look at that in, a, in another video. Right, so what I do is I will duplicate this page file, make a copy. But first, I'll title this introduction and chapter one. Okay, then I go to here, file, make a copy. This is going to be the copy. And I'm going to retitle this one as chapter two beyond. Okay, so I should close that one. Okay, what I'll do is a file, save, save to a folder, create a new folder, folder name, cycling, I shall just call it. Add to new folder. Design added to cycling, go to folder. And there's the folder, cycling. Okay, so I'm going to close that one now because that's chapter two. That's the next one we'll be working on in a, in a little while from now. And we'll go back to the one we've been working on. And I'm going to remove all these outside borders. Takes a little time, but it's worth it. Because you can save yourself a fortune when it comes to having your book formatted. If you just simply do it yourself. And there's lots of features in Canva for you to get the best from it. Okay, so that's that. Done. For now. And I'm going to go to File. Save to Folder. My Projects. Cycling. Move here. Save. Go to Folder. I've now got the two pages in my folder. And we'll leave it like that for now. I'm going to download this as a PDF just to show you what it looks like at this moment. I always click Flatten and I always use CMYK. Download. And that's how it looks on a PDF. Nice clean lines. Professional looking layout. The image quality is great. You can see here we've got a wider margin narrow margin we've got the book title chapter title book title chapter title as we go yeah it's all looking pretty good that's me just going through the process if i was to have been doing it um without having to do um the video i'll have had it done in a flash it would have been half that time and the next chapters are much easier setting out those first few pages was the hardest part now doing chapter after chapter is no problem at all and we'll go into that soon uh, as we build up our chapters we'll also go into developing the book cover and publishing the whole book and seeing how it goes before maybe thinking about putting it into an ebook version as well but we'll see how the paperback version goes first and i have my reasons for that and i've mentioned that before about in one of my videos about um not releasing an ebook and a paperback book at the same time, my preference. So, right, okay, I hope that, uh, I hope that helped. And, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with us on this one.